Papua New Guinea again. This is round two. Yeah. Last time I was in Papua New Guinea, I got my butt kicked into my face. Complete annihilation, complete domination by the black bass. Broke 100 pound test like it was nothing. Going after the toughest fish we have ever faced. It's like Mission Impossible. I came here for one thing, and that's sweet redemption. You can't even explain this fish. I'm trying to get revenge on him this time. We're coming back to kick some serious ass, and I think it's gonna happen right here. I think it's time to get us the big boys. There's a reason for me to live. This is the moment. Four wheel drive, mud, chainsaw, shotguns, fishing. I'm ready to rock. If Chris Owen, he's lost. It's kind of a weird scenario. When I have my life in his hand, I'm scared. Out fishing with the drug cartel. Bad. A guy that can really cut loose sometimes. But also really worry about what's going down. I'm a little African. I'm a little nervous. I don't care what we do as long as I make it back in one piece. Brian. He's a researching machine, okay? He's got all the latest GPS, satellite, map technology. Yeah, that guy is Jerry Rick. So much stuff. We're not gonna pretend to be pro bass fishermen. We actually really don't know what we're doing half the time, but we're doing it anyway. That's what we're here to do. We're here to explore and to try to find these bass. Go, 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 go. That's what I'm talking about. We're in a really crazy situation right now where the tourism board of Papua New Guinea has actually asked us to come and check out their southern coast and see what we can find in the ways of black bass. The last time we fished black bass in PNG, we got annihilated. We were under-equipped to land these fish. This time the tourism board of Sport Fishing PNG gave us all the stuff we need to get it done. We've had 10 months to modify and beef up our equipment. And hopefully this trip, you know, has a different ending. This is takeoff. We're underway. There's a lot of fish to go after around the globe, and there has been no other fish that we have fished for that has haunted us as much and as badly as this fish has. This fish has made me lose sleep since the last time I was here, and I got my butt kicked in. The big ones we hooked shattered our line, snapped them, broke our rods. This fish is the toughest fish on the planet. We've had 10 months to modify and beef up our equipment. So, I mean, literally for like the last nine months, we have been doing nothing but in the back of our minds planning for this trip. If we fail to land these fish on this trip, I don't know what else we could really do. So we've had to resort to some blue water tactics. What makes this fish so difficult, you gotta stop it in literally three, four feet. I mean, the whole point is just stop them in their tracks if possible. Luke decided to design us a new rod, a black bass rod, just for this trip. This is its kind of its virgin trip out here. We still got some markers and prototype stuff on the grip, um, but I, I, I don't think we're gonna be able to break this thing, and I don't think a black bass is too. We had a call with Tim Ray Jeff at Airflow before the trip, and he gave us an idea to try and make our own fly lines. We keep on snapping lines. Um, we had to resort to this new uh, this new method. He suggested doing what uh, most people probably wouldn't think to do, and that's uh, thread a fly line inside of a 130-pound Dacron hollow core line. We got a small arsenal of uh, loop reels that we're going to be using, so we've got to actually do a little bit of modification to them, just uh, slight adjustments, and we're going to basically just make it so we can lock these drags completely down. When you're done with it, you end up with a pretty strong outfit. I mean, there's not much out there I think that's gonna probably be able to break this. First impressions of it are unbelievable. So right about now, we're gonna test this line out and just pull on it, really. Yeah, you see this little thing that looks like a donut, Chris? If I fall over, you're supposed to throw it to me. <laughs> if you're relying on the donut to save your life, you're dead. This is a 130 pound hollow core braid with a fly line inside of it. Test number one. I think it's gonna work. Well, we'll see what happens when a 30, 40 pound PNG black bass tries to railroad me into the sticks. <laughs> <laughs> 
The goal is the headwaters, where the black bass live. We got to reach them somehow, and there's no guarantees that we'll even make it. We just got word that there's a cyclone headed our direction. So there's a hurricane sweeping up the south from the southeast. We have a 50-50% ch chance of it hitting us. The mother of all cyclones is coming in on us right now. This can't mean good news for us. This is, this is definitely a bad way to start a fishing trip. They'll be puking. Batten down the hatches. Violent diarrhea. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. For me, you guys will be fine. <laughs> the cyclone is like right on our tail. We only have a few short days to fish this river, and there's a high possibility that the cyclone's gonna prevent this trip from happening entirely. It's dark. And it's coming, it's coming with a howl. We traveled all through the night through some nasty, nasty seas. Uh, I'm surprised that more people didn't throw up last night. 24 hours of motoring, and we, we finally get up here, but... We're in the middle of freaking nowhere, PNG, and we just pulled up on the, really the first village that we've seen. I mean, it's just stilt homes, dudes in dugout canoes paddling around. I mean, everybody's just kind of waking up, it looks like. And they're, they're looking at us like, who in the hell are these guys? And we had to go get permission to go up the river and fish their water and hopefully catch their fish. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It looks like some sort of war dance. Uh, we brought some things in peace to hope that we can make some sort of treaty. We're going to go jump in the skiffs and motorboat to shore and, and see if we can't make some friends. <laughs> I have no idea what the village is going to say, and we need to get permission oh, yeah. to even head up this way. Nice to meet you guys. This is something we haven't quite experienced. Are they going to say no? This is one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen in my entire life. This is wild. I don't even know what's going on. I have no idea. Did I just get married? As you can see, the crowd around the place. We are so happy to be with you all. In fact, uh, entertaining you people with the, our cultural things. And uh, we are so thankful that you have given us uh, such a supply of the school. Number of population. Very thankful to be here. For us to be able to come up here and do what we're doing and go fish their waters, we have to get the approval from uh, the heads of the village. So we just got that and we're stoked. We're gonna be able to go up these rivers and, and fish pretty much wherever we want to. There's a river right there. <laughs> we have traveled the whole southern coast of Papua New Guinea and came into this giant river system and it's just getting smaller. Usually we cruise up these rivers in a little boat, but this is not a boat. This is a ship. How many feet is this thing? It's ridiculous. I don't know how far we're going to be able to get this boat up this river, but yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, we're in this, I mean, pretty tight river. Never met, never met anything like this. Definitely did not see this coming. You know what that was? That was a curse. Well, apparently, apparently Chris seems to think that was a curse that just got placed on us. I think it was a greeting. I think, I think it was uh, her basically saying, welcome, you guys are going to slay. I don't know. It, it, it's not looking too good. I mean, we're stuck. We're completely grounded. It's time to drop the boats and head into the headwaters. Yeah. This is the day, man. First day on the water since we've been here. We are deep, deep in the Papua New Guinea coastline right now. We've got the rods, we've got the system, we've got everything. Uh, you know, hopefully it all holds together when we hook one of these fish. This is my chance to prove my love to my sport. The real work is about to start. We're gonna make our way up past the village camp up here. Probably another you know, two or three more bends and we'll get in the boats and get some fly lines in the water. Like all rivers in Papua New Guinea, you gotta get permission from the village to go up here. Um, and you also have to have a member of the village to guide you up here. So that's what we're doing right now. We're stopping by the village and we're picking up one of the local villagers and uh, he's gonna join us for the day. He's gonna help paddle and uh, he's gonna just basically hang out with us. Yeah, we got a little bit of situation. We uh, 
we gotta take these uh, village guys on the boat, right? And we picked this guy up, and he just jumped out of our Dad, boat. He just cut down a banana tree. <laughs> Hacked down a banana tree and brought in 600 bananas. I mean, that's like a cardinal rule. Come on, I mean, we all fish, we've all heard the stories. We know what's up with that. If you have bananas on the boat, your boat's gonna sink or everybody's gonna die or something bad's gonna happen or you're gonna have zero luck. <laughs> we are screwed. That's something that you want to not put on your boat unless you want your boat to sink or unless you want not to catch any fish, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. This is quite possibly the worst thing that has ever or could ever happen. Like, did you ever, you ever see that Brady Brady Bunch episode where, where Marsha got that, that little tiki totem in Hawaii and made everybody sick for the rest of the trip. They had like spiders and everything crawling around in all of their luggage and they totally ruined their vacation. That's the equivalent of a banana in the boat, brother. I don't know about this whole curses and banana thing. Could it possibly be that everybody just sucks and we have no idea what we're doing? It feels I think the plan is that we're gonna go up this river and then there's a side channel that's got tannic, that's got black water in it. Crossing, crossing fingers, big time, that that river's got some clarity in it. Well, this is the furthest up the river that we've been so far, and the water clarity is starting to look really, really good. Look at the size of that stick bug right there. It fell out of the tree. We thought it was a branch, oh, and then it started moving. Wow, look at that thing. Dude, you can't be that big and delicious in the jungle without some kind of poisonous or stinger, right? Here, it's got oh, wings. Oh, it's got Hey, no, wait, no, what container are you gonna put this in? Here, Chris, keep it, keep it. Keep it. Hey, what the hell is this? Hey, hey, look at that! Don't keep break his legs, don't break his legs. Oh leg. my gosh. Jay, we just caught a dinosaur today. That's the biggest bug I've ever seen. Hands down, without right? Without a doubt, yeah, without a doubt. We need to start tying this kind of fly. This is mind blowing. I mean, this river doesn't even have a name, first of all. The locals call it Bat River, and for obvious reasons. Fruit bats, gigantic fruit bats. That is freaking crazy. Oh my God. It's just raining guano. This is crazy. I mean, I'm not kidding you. We've probably seen 100,000 bats cruising up, all of them like this big. I have the biggest, the biggest dream ever is to uh, get a colony of fruit bats, train them to do my bidding. Go collect me all of the virgins. I, for one, am a huge believer in the banana in the boat curse. Yesterday, we had some crazy lady, I swear, put a curse on us, and now the sky is full of bats. Long ways to make it here. It could be complete failure, or it can be the greatest days of our lives. Yeah, we are fishing in some of the stickiest stuff, snaggiest stuff that I've ever seen before. It seemed like we were just having bad luck fishing these snags. That's probably the zone where they're hanging out. And my fly found a big ass stick. Like all bass, they like structure. And they live in some of the nastiest structure on the river. And that's what we've been fishing. Biggest logs usually mean the biggest fish. We gotta tie on heavy wire weed guards onto our flies. Otherwise, we'd be hung up in the sticks the entire time. Or uh, break the fly line in this case. <laughs> Let me catch this palm tree first. We've been in some difficult fishing situations before, but this is a whole new level. Every time I set foot into a jungle, it tries to kill me. Hey, get, oh, oh, oh. I just stepped on something and went between my toes. I'm dead serious, you guys. That was a close one, man. I almost died right there. I just stepped on one of the most poisonous stakes in, in Papua New Guinea, under my foot right under my toes, man. And then I see this hole, and it goes down into the hole. It might have just got a little venom in me. And then I just like felt weird, like my kidneys. I got all dizzy, I stood up, I st I stood up on the log. I got all dizzy, I might die this afternoon. I'm telling you, it's like one of the most poisonous snakes in the world is here. I forget the name of it though. Wait, Maybe man, I just I'm got bad so gas or something. Jay, I just stepped on one of those poisonous snakes. Look at them, just keep fishing, whatever. I got two hours to live and no one even cares. I'm just gonna die right here. Whenever bad things happen, we just drink beer. Time to deal with some bass problems. It always helped back home. It's 
pretty clear that the curse is in full effect, but we have oh. to keep pushing on oh, until we can actually so break it. Archer fish? This fish spits water in a bug on a stick, knocks it over. Pacific tarpon. Never caught one of these before in my life. I know, dude. I am so ecstatic right now. Tarpon. On top of here. What a different animal. Bigger eye, but everything exactly the same, except the tarpon back in the U.S. would eat these tarpon as bait. <laughs> that fish! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Probably caught some crazy catfish. Get after it, Come on, buddy. Sarah, baby. Whoa, he's nice. <laughs> First bear and PNG. Man, I am pumped. Trying to lace him up. Got him. Got him. About broke my wrist. Okay, pull him out. Yeah! Yeah! Whoa! Gotta get us up. I got him. He's wrapped. He wrapped. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. Damn it! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! Dude, it was coming right across the top of that little tiny branch. Came right up from underneath there and inhaled it. 100 pound test like it weighed no thing. No way, dude. Like it was nothing. That was redemption fish right there. I think we're cursed. Yeah, I don't know. Could be those bananas. Busted. I think it's gonna be one of those days where they sing, the choir sing, and lift the curse. Yeah! Oh, it's a big one. It's about time. Oh yeah, you got it. The, the doubt started creeping in my mind about the curse. The curse is Very, very little is known about this fish. Yeah. Here. They don't know where they breed, how big they get. How big are you? Show yourself. Wow. How much time they spend in fresh water, you know, versus the salt water. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, there he is. Oh. Holy sh. OK, baby. So working with James Cook University uh, in Australia. Black bass tags. Dude, that thing's a monster! Didn't travel all this way to get skunked. Yeah! What the? <laughs> the chompers on that thing, dude. He just came out and freaking crushed it, man. Yeah! One of the hardest fighting freshwater fish in the world. You're showing him what's up. He's not going anywhere. Get in there! Yeah! yeah! This is what I came here for. Yeah! Dude, my heart is pounding so hard right now. Did that just happen? There needs to be some studies done on this fish because we don't know anything about it. These fish are freaking crazy. <laughs> Dude, that thing is just a slab of muscle. Once we got up here, it was like one after another. That was a good fight. The black bass, a PNG. How cool is it that we're actually, we're down here, the opportunity not only to catch these fish, but to also Ooh. kind of contribute to the scientific study of these fish. Very, very little is known about this fish. It's, it's just, it's a super cool thing, and I'm super, uh, super stoked to be able to be a part of it.